Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to worship this uh, first week after Easter, and we're in the Easter season. Much like Christmas, it's not something that just ends in one day. Um, the, a lot of times this day in, in, in larger churches is known as Associate Pastor Sunday, um, and that uh, sometimes the senior pastor goes and just collapses for a little bit to recover after Holy Week. This was a very different Holy Week, um, and a lot of helpers made it a lot easier uh, to get through. Uh, but we had already scheduled something very special, which is a Laity Sunday today. Uh, we try to do that once a year where we have members of the congregation present the worship service and the message, uh, children's time. Uh, we're going to have a, a visit with Winnie the Pooh a little bit later here, so I hope you have your kids ready to watch that. Um, and it, we decided to stick with it. Uh, so that's meant having different folks tackle technology challenges, uh, put things together for us, and, and, uh, and, and me be able to share that with you here this morning. I'm happy to do that. You're going to hear a little bit more about that from one of our, our deacon chairs, uh, Brett, as he shares a little bit later in the service. Uh, always best way to keep, keep up to date on things is to uh, be a part of our weekly update and our uh, monthly uh, newsletter. And uh, if you're not, please let us know. We'd be happy to sign you up. Um, and that's, the, that's how you're going to get the bulk of the detailed information. I'm going to share a few things briefly with you, and then we'll get rolling. Um, and I should say, I, I, I'm, I'm here in, uh, in kind of my, my family room, and already my, my family's helping me out. My oldest dog has come in and laid down and fallen asleep. And so as I talk, watching somebody sleep, it just makes me feel like I'm right there in the sanctuary on Sunday morning. Um, so uh, that's, it's always helpful when things are, are brought back to a familiar place. Um, one of the things I want to share with you is a new opportunity. Uh, we have been having uh, our 7th through 12th graders meet on Zoom uh, Fridays at 5. That's going to continue. Uh, we have also our Zoom gathering after worship, our coffee hour, and details are in the email we sent out, and I can supply them to you if you don't get that. Uh, also, we have a Wednesday evening uh, gathering, and that's at 6.30 p.m., although we're happy to look at other days and times also if that would be better for folks. That was just kind of picked um, just in the middle of things, uh, but if that doesn't work for you, please let us know. We'd, we'd be happy to move things. And uh, a new gathering is going to be Mondays at 5.00. And that's going to be for our younger kids. Uh, so uh, kindergarten through sixth grade, Mary Skripko is going to uh, lead that time. And so Monday at five, kindergarten through sixth grade, uh, uh, kind of a Zoom gathering and activities. And so I uh, wanted to get that on your schedule. And of course, she's going to let uh, families be reminded of that as well. One of the neat things I posted about it yesterday, um, now that we're even more encouraged to wear masks when we're in places where we need to be close to other people, um, uh, that means a lot of people are probably scram scrambling for masks, and we happen to have some really, uh, really talented folks in the church who are making masks. Um, one of them, Jennifer Aldag, uh, shared with us, and we put in the weekly update, uh, that she's happy to go ahead as, as she's able to, to make masks for folks. And I, uh, I, I wore uh, the mask that she made for me uh, yesterday when I was presiding um, at a funeral. Not when I was right up front, but all the rest of the time, everyone else had their masks. And um, I had this wonderful rainbow mask. Maybe I'll pull it out a little bit later to show to you. Um, and uh, it was kind of fun. It was bright. It is something that's very non-threatening and kind of projects that message that we love to share of everyone being loved and included by God. Um, so she's happy to do that. I think we probably have some others that might be as well, but I don't want to volunteer them without them saying so. Uh, so if, if you are interested and you want to share masks with people as you can or at a cost, whatever you need to do, um, please just let me know or let Lisa know and we'll, we, will, we will spread the word. Uh, but that's been a big help. Uh, the other thing that I want to go ahead and share, just a brief note, uh, we often celebrate things and one of the things we have, um, one of our contributors this morning, Patty, who's going to be sharing some of the music, it's her birthday today. Um, and if we were in the sanctuary, we might all join in singing uh, and doing that sometimes. Um, but uh, you can express your well wishes. She's actually in the chat right now. Uh, so uh, that's another way you can go ahead and let her know. Um, but we appreciate the, the ministry that she is doing and, and David's doing and everyone's kind of uh, sharing as a part of this time. There are probably many more announcements. Normally at this time I'd ask and I'd point and say, hey, does anybody else have something to share? And we'd have those kind of uh, offerings. I'm sorry that we don't have that same mechanism here. Um, but please do let us know if we're missing things, if we need to highlight folks. Actually, I will share one more thing now that I think about it, and uh, hit a little bit later too. But we've kind of come to the end of our stewardship campaign. That is the time where we are promoting and asking for folks to make their pledges to the church. Um, and we have a pretty good fix on where that's ending, and uh, we'll be sharing that this week. And also we have a raffle winner for folks who got their pledges in, um, and that's going to be announced this week as well. 
but in addition, if you haven't pledged, you haven't got that in yet, if you've never pledged before and you'd like to help support the church, um, we absolutely could use it and we would appreciate it. And, and so please uh, be in touch with us and, and share those things. If you have questions about it, I'm happy to talk to you or communicate, email, whatever, uh, to kind of fill you in. But obviously we rely on that support to do everything we do um, and, and we really appreciate it. So I want to begin by sharing our meditation here this morning, and then I'm going to hand it off, and you're going to see quite a few things offered by other people in the church, and I'll be back a little bit later on. So first, one of the earliest resurrection scenes in the Bible is that of Thomas demanding evidence. He wanted to see, to touch, to prove. Those who question and probe and debate are heirs of the apostles just as much as the most fervent of believers. That's by John Meacham. Welcome to Lady Sunday 2020, the COVID-19 edition. Lady Sunday is supposed to be a chance for Pastor Brian to take a week off and relax. The Board of Deacons thought that following Holy Week, this would be a good Sunday because he's been working so hard. But Brian won't be well. Brian won't be in front of the camera very much this morning. He is the magician working behind the scenes, pulling all the parts together to bring you a coherent Sunday service. Thank you, Pastor Brian, for all you do. Even though we cannot be together in the sanctuary, we are together in God, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Let us open our hearts to His unconditional love, and as we prepare to worship this morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Sing a new song, a springtime shout out to life. Sing praise to our joyful Easter God, whose power brings new life out of death. Immerse doubt and despair in the fountain of new birth. Find refreshment and strength for a future of hope. For God has taken ordinary things and made the extraordinary. Sing a new song. Amen. The day of resurrection, a talent of abroad. The
Hi, my friends from West Avon Congregational Church and greeting to our children's time. I hope all you parents will gather the, your kids around so they can hear this message. Today is a special Sunday called Lady Sunday. Lady Sunday is when members of the congregation agree to different parts of the service in order to let the staff have some time off. So my name is Bruce and I've offered to give the children's message today during this special Sunday. Obviously, we can't be together, and until we can, we have to do the best we can by communicating remotely. Well, during this very unusual time, when there's no schools, when you kids are mostly cooped up in your house, or maybe you can go outside for a walk or a little fresh air, I just wanted to share with you a little message with the help of some friends of mine to see what we can do during these times. The other day, a friend of mine, Christopher Robin, from Winnie the Pooh gave me a call and he's not feeling well and he asked me if I could possibly go and check up on his friends. So I'm about to take a walk through the hundred acre woods where luckily I can stay my distance, what we're calling social distancing from each other, while I'll check up on uh, Christopher's various friends from Winnie the Pooh. So just, now we'll take a walk and we'll see how they're doing and see if we can offer them any assistance. Folks, I'm sorry about that. Uh, that movie, for some reason, I thought I had it playing earlier. It's not playing right now. Uh, so I'm going to bring that back to you. I'm going to try and get that going, um, and I apologize. So uh, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of heads up when that's coming back, and uh, we can continue Bruce's children's time in a little bit. So sorry about that. Uh, there's always going to be something. Uh, I'm going to continue with the worship service while I work on that. Let us pause for a moment to still our hearts and minds and to welcome the Holy Spirit in our midst. Holy God, nothing is beyond your power to transform. In a gray dawn, you coax songs of Alleluia. From the tombs of despair where we take refuge, you call us to wake up and work. We praise you for this amazing day. Come, risen Christ, in newness and hope on this Eastertide morning. We pray this as we join our hearts and voices in sharing the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession redeeming God with you there is always more life more hope and more joy when doubt assails us and we fail to recognize you at work in our lives Lord have mercy 
When fear impairs our faith and our eyes and ears and hearts do not know you, Christ have mercy. When anger and sorrow stop us from doing the risky work of love, Lord have mercy. Within every kernel of doubt, there is a spark of life and hope. In those times when our faith falters, when we cannot recognize the presence of the holy among us, God takes our faith and transforms it patiently, showing us the many ways Christ walks among us. Look around as close as your own beating heart, and in the eyes of your nearest neighbor, grace abounds all the heart of all you are all God's children, loved without condition. Go in peace. Amen. Please listen to the word of God as it is recorded in the Bible. Our first reading is from Acts 2, chapter 14a, verses 22 through 32. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and all of that, all of us, are witnesses. Our second reading is from Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. May God bless to us the reading and the hearing of this scripture. Thank you. Okay, quick update. I should have our journey into uh, Winnie the Pooh's woods there in just a few moments. So 
we're going to hear uh, some music from Patty and David, and then I'm going to share that hopefully with you. Okay, I didn't want to interrupt them to try to make the change while they were playing, so I'm going to see if I can do this now without that good. Okay, so sorry, you get to watch me work here for a second while I make a quick change, and uh, hopefully we get to follow up and see what happens. Basking in the sun on top of his home. So now I'm on my way through the 100 acre woods. And whose home do I come up to first? A rabbit. Hi rabbit, how you doing today on this blustery day? He goes, I'm doing fine except I miss my friend. So I say, well rabbit, I got a little treat for you. And I drop off a bag of carrots, careful not to get too near him so that he can come out and enjoy the treat once I leave. Have a great day Robert, rabbit and Christopher Robin says hi. So now I'm making my way through the 100 acre woods to see who I can find next. And lo and behold, who do I come up on? Who's this? Tigger, basking in the sun on top of his home. How you doing today, Tigger? I just came to say hi because Christopher Robin wanted me to check up on you. Yeah, I know you're lonely like the rest of us. But guess what? I bought you a treat. Your favorite cereal, Honey Nut Cheerios. Enjoy, Tigger, and have a good day. We'll see you soon. So next step up as I walk through the 100 acre woods. I know Pooh's house is around here somewhere. I just got to find it and not get lost. Oh, what is this note? It says Pooh's corner. So careful to stay my distance. I knock on the door and open it. And who's there but Pooh? How you doing today, Pooh? Christopher Robin says hi. And guess what? I brought you a treat. You can't be out of honey. So here's some honey for you to enjoy while you're in isolation and hopefully we'll see you soon. And Christopher Robin says hi. 
So I leave Pooh alone and I continue on my trip to my final destination. I know he's around here somewhere. Where could he be? Ah, look who's up in his tree house. It's Piglet. Piglet, how are you doing? Yeah, I know. Like all your other friends, they all say hi and I know you're missing them too. But guess what? Do I have a treat for you? I've got your favorite food, planters mixed nuts. So when you get a chance, come on down the tree and enjoy the food and hopefully we'll see you soon. So that's my trip to the 100 acre woods. But before I leave you, my friends all have a message for you that I just wanted to share. First, Tigger says, a giggle a day keeps the blues away. Very good advice. And Tigger says, don't forget to smile. So make sure you all smile. Finally, probably the most important message I've seen during this time comes from Pooh. And I'm going to leave you with this. The most important thing is even if we're apart, we'll always be with you. Take care and have a great rest of your day. Folks, I'm sorry about those technical difficulties. The software completely froze up on me, so I had to get out and restart. Um, if uh, Some people may have not hit play right away and missed part of that children's time uh, yet again. So if, that, if that's true, if you missed part of it, put that in the chat. And uh, if that's true, then at the end, after our benediction, I will replay it for folks uh, in case you want to see that again at the, the very end of the service. And I apologize to Bruce for having these problems uh, with something he did work so hard on, did such a good job. Um, so now we're going to head into the message uh, for today. And uh, we feel really privileged. We have one of our folks who has been a member of our church for many, many years and uh, has been just a, a vital part of so much that's happened at West Avon. And um, he felt moved to go ahead and to share with you today. So I'm going to uh, offer this reflection to you uh, that he's given to us. Good morning. This morning I'd like to talk about prayer, mostly personal prayer or private, not the community or as gathers when we're all gathered together in the congregation and, and say the Lord's Prayer or have a community prayer and read from the bulletin. An incident involving, involving me personally at the beginning of the year caused me to think very seriously about my relationship with God and how I talk to him in prayer. I thought it might be interest to at least a few of you in the congregation to see if there are any parallels that you might realize. Or if the others just to see what an old man has experienced. Just to start, I always considered myself religious, but not overly religious. I went to school, Sunday school, since I went to kindergarten, and always at a, a congregational church, which was only two and a half blocks from my house in New York. I went to that all through my youth, and even uh, after my marriage. We moved up to West Hartford, and after our marriage, and what joined the Congregational Church in West Hartford. And then finally, we moved out to West Avon in 1961, where we joined this church and have been members ever since. Well, getting back to what had my incident, uh, this fall, I had trouble with my knee and it seemed to get worse and worse, which affected my golf, gardening, bowling, and stair climbing. So I went to the doctor and I was not looking forward to surgery. So we talked about how other, other alternatives. One was to go for uh, a little therapy, I guess you would call it. So I, I arranged for that, went for about a month, a little over a month. And at the end of that, I thought things were actually worse than better. So I went back to the doctor again and decided to look for something else. He suggested we try 
a cortisone shot. Well, I tried that, and that helped me for about two weeks, and then I guess we had to resort to surgery. So I finally found a surgeon, and after doing some x-rays and other investigations, decided that we could do a partial replacement of my right knee. So that was fine with me. It shouldn't take too long. And normally these days, you go in for an operation like that, and it's a in and out in one day. But this time, they decided since I was uh, of advanced age, I'm 88 now, I was 88 at that time, that I would stay overnight. So on the morning of the 16th of December, my wife, Carol, drove me into the hospital to get ready for the operation, which took place uh, at one o'clock that afternoon. Apparently, everything really went well because by late afternoon, I was up and walking and walked about 100 feet down the corridor and back again with no problem. Just a little extra pain, which was anticipated. Went to bed, kind of tired, and uh, don't remember too much till the next morning. And everything seemed to be okay in the morning. The therapist came around, and after nurses had done their thing, I got up and I walked. Back again, and it seemed we're in crying. So, what's down? I was really tired. I don't really remember too much. I apparently, uh, the drugs that I had been given for the pain and for that really had taken over and I was in a state that I could not remember a thing. My wife thought I was getting a little unruly and I was agitated and called my son and he came over to the house and I still was somewhat agitated but and, uh, incoherent but they uh, talked to the doctor and they thought I would take some of the more pills and, and get Put, them to, put me to bed. Well, that at last, and I, I had a really bad night, Wednesday night. Thursday, things seemed to have gotten worse, although I can't remember a thing, not a thing. My wife and my son finally decided I needed to get taken to the emergency room in the hospital where I arrived on Thursday morning. At that time, from there on in, I don't remember a thing. But I was told later that I was taken up to the intensive care unit where I spent the better part of three days. They discovered that uh, I now had gotten pneumonia. I had a reaction to the narcotics for the pain pills. Uh, my kidneys were shutting down and I was in pretty bad shape. Uh, fortunately for me, I was totally unconscious through the whole episode. But I, I guess I kind of an, an, uh, got my family uh, uh, a little concerned. And finally, uh, things picked up a little bit, and I was put in a private room where my family could come and join me. And my senses started to come back again, although my head was still spinning a little bit. And occasionally the room would tilt and I'd, have, I'd be looking down at the floor and the piano and a television would be on the floor and my bed would be on the wall. But uh, eventually that cleared and I started to be able to think a little more clearly. And I couldn't imagine what had happened to me. It, 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 I had no way could I recall that anything happened to me for about three days. Well, as things got better and I had all these tubes and whatnot into my mind and in, in my arms and blood was being taken and it was quite a busy place. And then that evening, uh, when I was back to almost back to normal, I lie in bed, it was quiet and dark. And I thought, you know, I need to talk to God. I need to pray a little. There's nobody there it was quiet. 
And so I started my prayer and I was asking him and thanking him for pulling me through and kind of curious of why, what happened to me. And, and without any of my expectation or, or, or understanding, suddenly I found myself walking on this beautiful path on like a warm summer evening with just myself and appeared to be God next to me. And we walked along this path and I didn't say anything, but I thought of all these things I was going to ask God. And, it, and I had a complete faith that he knew exactly what I was thinking and I could understand what he would be, what his answers would be, but there was nothing that was spoken and clearly understood. I felt one, wonderful. And I, and I even thought about when I was going to ask him why or, or how or where I was going from there, that that didn't seem to matter if I got an answer at that time. I knew that sooner or later I would get that answer and that God would take care of me. Well, I continued and I really can't tell how long I was experienced this walk. I just think it ended with my falling asleep. Well, the next morning I awoke and I couldn't wait to talk to somebody about this and wonder what happened. Well, anyhow, I felt very, very great and everything was, was a marvelous improvement. And from a, what appeared to be a near death event, I'm now feeling very, very well and practically back to normal. I had the therapist show up. I did a little bit of walking. I uh, took all the medicines. My family came. I had both my wife, my son, uh, my son's wife, Cheryl, my daughter, Bonnie, and my husband, Lenny. And they had all been there while I was in the ICU. And they were relating to me all the things that were they were doing and pumping into me and, and whatever. And uh, they're, they're very concerned that I wasn't going to make it, but I did. And since that time, I have had other experiences, not experiences, but times when I really wanted to go and talk to God and experience the same thing, which I have been fortunate enough to do. And at those types of times, I can unload my concerns and I have complete faith that what I'm doing is actually an experience with God. And as I thought about it later on, I said, you know, how would I really explain that? And to the best of my knowledge or best that I could figure it out is that it's faith that I had faith that I had in God that I didn't even know I had. But it certainly came true and helped me immensely. And I really am very pleased. To be, and I always felt that I, that because of that, maybe I should share that with other people and let them know. Maybe they had the same type of experience. I would hope that they did, but if they didn't, they could think about it and maybe open themselves up so that that does happen. And those that other people that are listening, maybe they just hear an old man with experience going through the hospital and saying his prayers and pulling through and coming before you today to talk. And I appreciate the time that you're given to listen to me. And I, again, would like to take this opportunity to thank you for all the prayers that was said to me while I was in the hospital and how I could read about them in the bulletin. And again, I'm, I'm pleased to belong to this church and I appreciate everything that's all been done. And I thank you very much. And that's, I think I could end it the way Pastor Brian would say, Amen. It's time for prayers of the people. In order to maintain confidentiality, 
we will keep our prayers general in nature. Let us pray. For the members of our congregation, let us pray for physical healing, mental and spiritual healing, and peace. For those who would lead us through this pandemic crisis, including those leaders of the town of Avon, the state of Connecticut, the United States of America, and all global leaders, may your hearts and minds be open to divine direction in solving all that would promote the health, safety, and welfare of humankind. May this crisis bring forth unity, compassion, and peace. Amen. So again, we don't have offering plates to pass around. Um, frankly, it would be a great Sunday for that because um, Russ getting here and sharing with us um, such a personal moment, um, but one that had such a profound effect on him um, and hoping that that might be a help for others um, who maybe experience life the way he has and to, to have then that very intimate experience of God. Um, well, it, it's pretty moving. So uh, um, I, I want to thank him. That's not an easy thing to do. Up on the screen, you see the details that we do have for Offering Plate, which is, of course, you can always mail things into the church, um, as we've done for a long time. Uh, but also, we have this online giving option as well that's directly connected to our membership software, and everything gets recorded easily, and um, you can uh, designate exactly what you want it used for. Um, and, uh, and then later you'll be able to see reporting out of that for yourself. There is a charge there for credit cards and we want to make sure folks are, are aware of that. Um, but, um, we want to make sure, you know, that have that option as well. And again, the pledges, uh, and letting us know what you're willing to give is equally important because we need to make plans pretty soon here for our budget going forward, uh, in these crazy times. Um, so, um, anything you can do, uh, to help to support the church and let us know about that, that's always a, a, a big help. But thank you for your support, and um, that happens in a lot of ways. It happens through the financial giving, but you see right here today, it happens also through the volunteers willing to step out of their comfort zones and uh, to go ahead and to um, really be leaders in our church. Um, and there's so many. Uh, we're grateful for them doing that. I want to now move us to, once again, a time of song. And if you've printed the bulletin uh, from the email, you can sing along. Also, I'll put the, uh, the words on the screen for you here. The strife is o'er, the battle done, the victory of life is won. The song of triumph has begun. Alleluia! The powers of death have done their worst, but Christ their legions has dispersed. Let shouts of a holy joy outburst. Alleluia! The three sad days are quickly sped. Christ rises glorious from the dead. All glory to our risen head. Alleluia! Calvary from death's dread sting your servants free that we may live eternally Alleluia Thanks again, folks, for coming and being a part of this worship service. We have just a little bit more, so don't don't leave quite yet. You don't have to rush to get to the cars today, so that's nice. Um, we do have coffee hour afterwards in Zoom, and if uh, you need details, it's in the weekly update, in uh, the monthly newsletter. It's also in the email I sent out yesterday with the worship bulletin. Um, but if you, if you need details, you're not, if you're not getting any of those, uh, just be in contact with me, and I'd be happy to, to share that with you. Um, in addition, I want to give thanks uh, uh, to Harold, 
who went around and was kind of uh, one of our, our lead tech people this week. Um, he met with different folks to go ahead and to record them if that was of assistance and um, and also uh, recorded our organ piece that we've heard. We've got some more pieces to share in the weeks ahead uh, by, by Don Funk. And so um, we're just so grateful uh, for that assistance. That really made things much easier uh, for a lot of people. Um, I am going to share uh, that children's time again after our benediction, just kind of on the end of the service here. Uh, before I do that, uh, when our deacons, who primarily are the ones who organize this service and then recruit some other folks to be a part of it, when they meet for many years now, uh, they've closed with powerful words from a prayer. And um, it's something that we have reflected in uh, the words and the banner in our, our fellowship hall uh, in there that uh, Nancy Nation arranged to get many, many years ago. And, and we've kind of found meaning from those words through these years. Um, and when they do it, they usually have a candle lit, the deacons, and they uh, join hands back in the time when you could join hands. And um, they uh, say this prayer together to close each meeting. Uh, of course, it's more challenging now uh, to figure out how to do that. So when we were having a Zoom meeting, um, we tried different ways, some quite humorous to get folks to be able to do it together. And uh, we hit upon uh, kind of a, a handoff method. Um, and it begins a little shaky on the audio. So know that that is not your computer. Uh, but it, it gets better, and um, they're going to share those words, that benediction. It's printed in your bulletin as well as our uh, closing prayer. Then I'll go back and I'll share the 100 Acre Woods piece if folks want to see that as the very last thing in this service. Uh, but again, we appreciate everybody and what you've done. If you want to be a part of these worship services, it doesn't have to be Laity Sunday to make that possible. Um, I'd love to incorporate music, readings, uh, you know, anything that you might think would be helpful. Uh, we'd love to have it. And there's mechanisms to do that. Um, I'll be sharing a message again next week, just in case. Uh, I used to always get uh, some jokes from our, our most recent past uh, treasurer about uh, if I didn't preach on a Sunday, should I get paid for that week? Uh, so I got to get back on it here pretty soon. I don't want Russ uh, uh, to take over my job. Um, but thank you for coming, for being a part of this. And be, be, feel free to share it with other folks, even with uh, the missteps. Uh, maybe this will be a way for them to experience uh, church community in a time where we feel a little bit cut off. So here's this closing benediction, and then we'll revisit Hundred Acre Woods. Christ has no body on earth now but ours. No hands but ours. No feet but ours. Ours are the eyes through which Christ's compassion must look out on the world. Ours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Ours are the hands with which he is still to bless. Amen. 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 So now I'm on my way through the Hundred Acre Woods. And whose home do I come up to first? Rabbit. Hi, Rabbit. How you doing today on this blustery day? He goes, I'm doing fine, except I miss my friend. So I say, well, Rabbit, I got a little treat for you. And I drop off a bag of carrots, careful not to get too near him, so that he can come out and enjoy the treat once I leave. Have a great day, Robert, Rabbit. And Christopher Robin says hi. So now I'm making my way through the Hundred Acre Woods to see who I can find next. And lo and behold, who do I come up on? Who's this? Tigger! Basking in the sun on top of his home. How you doing today, Tigger? I just came to say hi because Christopher Robin wanted me to check up on you. Yeah, I know you're lonely like the rest of us. But guess what? I bought you a treat. Your favorite cereal, Honey Nut Cheerios. Enjoy, Tigger, and have a good day. We'll see you soon. So next step up as I walk through the Hundred Acre Woods. I know Pooh's house is around here somewhere. I just got to find it and not get lost. Oh, what is this note? It says Pooh's Corner. So careful to stay my distance. I knock on the door and open it. And who's there but Pooh? How you doing today, Pooh? Christopher Robin says hi. And guess what? I brought you a treat. You can't be out of honey. So here's some honey for you to enjoy while you're in isolation and hopefully we'll see you soon. And Christopher Robin says hi. So I leave Pooh alone and I continue on my trip to my final destination. I know he's around here somewhere. Where could he be? Ah, look who's up in his treehouse. 
It's Piglet. Piglet, how are you doing? Yeah, I know. Like all your other friends, they all say hi, and I know you're missing them too. But guess what? Do I have a treat for you? I've got your favorite food, Planters Mixed Nuts. So when you get a chance, come on down the tree and enjoy the food, and hopefully we'll see you soon. So that's my trip to the 100 Acre Woods. But before I leave you, my friends all have a message for you that I just wanted to share. First, Tigger says, a giggle a day keeps the blues away. Very good advice. And Tigger says, don't forget to smile. So make sure you all smile. Finally, probably the most important message I've seen during this time comes from Pooh. And I'm gonna leave you with this. The most important thing is even if we're apart, we'll always be with you. Take care and have a great rest of your day. So thanks for joining us, folks. Be safe out there and take care.